Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. I am Joseph F. Ulsis, Addiction Master on most social media. I want to talk about a TV show called Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Now, this is a Marvel show. It was pitched, I think, right after Josh Whedon did the Avengers movie. And I think Disney, when did Disney uh, buy Marvel? I think around 2009. I think it was a great idea to hire Josh Whedon as the director. He's also the, I guess he's given credit as writing or starting the show. I think his brother and other people from the Marvel Universe, whatever you want to call it, a part of the team. I really enjoyed this show. And I think it's one of the best superhero shows out there. Seven seasons now, although the last two are smaller. So even if you want to say, oh, it's six seasons, it's still way more seasons than uh, the Netflix Marvel Universe. I think the Marvel Cinematic Universe has been excellent. A little bit up and down, but a real consistent line. I think the TV shows they did were really good, borderline on great. So in my opinion, the best written show would be Jessica Jones, season one. And as a whole, it's really good, great, I love it. And some of the other ones are up to and just about as good, but I've done a bunch of TV show um, podcasts about those shows. Here we have the actor from the Avengers, Clark Gregg. Uh, the character is Phil Coulson. And in the beginning of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. were filtered in, and he was one of the through lines that ran through the movies. It culminates in the Avengers, and he... Spoilers. Like, it's been so fucking long. He dies. Loki kills him. Stabs him with the scepter through the back. And it's a rallying point for the Avengers in that part of the movie. Or Nick Fury uh, frames it that way and narrates it that way. I love the Avengers movie. Still one of my uh, favorites. So he pitches the show and he's going to involve Coulson. And it's going to revolve around how he's back, why he's back. And... I think the, the premise of the Marvel Universe to connect with the TV Universe was genuine at first. I think they really planned on having characters come back and forth, getting some big actors. I remember, maybe it's Robert Downey Jr. or someone saying, why aren't I on the show yet? I don't know what season it was at that, at that point. But I thought there was going to be a real strong bridge between the cinematic and the TV show universes. And this tried to do that. Whereas later, the Netflix shows would hint at it, would talk about it. And since I like those shows generally, I think the whole Marvel Universe is fleshed out even better. So I think the TV shows were excellent addition to the whole Marvel plan. So the premise is he's going to put together a new team and investigate um, you know, cases, and it would kind of tie into the movies. You have a couple of uh, hints and um, little plots that were uh, talked about here and there, and it gets a little bit more deeper into the other seasons. I won't go into deep spoilers, except for my genuine love of the show and my recommendation to watch it, but I might touch on things here and there, so be warned if, if you're worried about that. I think it's an excellent show. Just go watch it. The portrayals of the character don't have to be spot on. So when you start bringing characters from the comics into the world or the movies and side characters, so you got eventually like Sif from the Thor movie is on the show. It helps and it bridges it. They do a storyline in the beginning that's from the comics, and everything doesn't have to look exactly like the comics. You want to be half and half with the movies, so I think they did, did that well. There's a pretty good story, but I talked about this in some other podcasts. Season one was a little rocky for me. I was a little hesitant to right away 
um, stop praising this show. I recognize some things it was doing that I didn't agree with that I don't know if it's subjective or objectively wrong. I, I would have to go into a more deep dive on it. But it was, it was a little rocky. And look, it's the first season. Even Buffy had its moments in the first season. Some of my favorite shows. But eventually, by the end of the season, I was hooked. The second season starts with a connection to Captain America the Winter Soldier. Uh, Coulson becomes the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. And at this point, you're waiting for the Marvel Universe, the cinematic universe, to at least recognize that he's alive. Because I'm like, oh, wow, this is going to be um, r- revealing to some of the characters. Why? Maybe they'll pivot to some of the... All right, maybe not the Tony Starks and the Captain Americas, maybe some of the Hawkeyes and um, other characters, and get them on the show to do little guest spots, even if they're on the view screen or, you know, a hologram or something. And they get close to that in some cases. The second season, I'm hooked. Uh, he's trying, Coulson tries to rebuild uh, this, the shield while dealing with Hydra. And then from near on, I really think the show is on really good, solid momentum. The characters that you built are really growing. I really got into them. I think the character development in the show is excellent. Who would know from Josh Whedon? But I think this one is a little more of a rocky start. And I don't think by the third season, they ever stopped trying to think of new things and innovative ways to do things to not be so cookie cutter so i think there were real efforts starting from the third season that show you that they didn't want to be the wb or or as good as some of the shows are let's say flash but it runs out of steam arrow i'll do one on that eventually where it lost me by season three with all the flashbacks and got bad and got a little better season three really picks up and you're moving along it starts to connect things a little more and there's the plots in the background that are being developed that are really coming through everything works i love the way the visuals are you got a couple of little special effects uh things here and there but nothing that i can remember blowing my like mind and saying oh this is ridiculous it's really drawing me out i'm trying to think now, I do these real quick surface thoughts type my feelings because I just finished watching it. But I don't remember season three's issues per se. Anyway, not enough to get me in a bad place. Like, I was a little hesitant in the first season. You know, fine, we're going to stick it out. Fell in love with it. Hooked every week, watching it with friends. Third season... It just really begins to be uh, uh, a real excellent show with not a lot of dives and dips. Meaning that there's a quality of the show that is maintained where when I watch things like The Flash, uh, Supergirl, um, I wouldn't even put, maybe, I don't know, Legion of Superheroes. There are so many times I just don't want to be there. Like, okay, I could miss this episode. I know they're going to do these three things. And I never felt that way with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I think they kept that pacing on a great level for the most of the show. Yeah, I guess we could nitpick and go into little things. But unlike the other shows, I put this in a category above the others. So by third season, fourth season, I think this show is... One of the best shows out there at the time. It never let me down. Um, You're trying to find Coulson's place and what what he came back. Everything's trying to resolve. And you've got other movies starting to tie in. The Sokovia Accords. And then um, from the fourth season, it really deals with... um, more of a matrix type feel where it is a overarching story because they really did it cool with sometimes they would do one season arcs but there's a plot line going through 
And then the next season, that plot line would be broken up and it would be half the season on this, half the season on that. So you get into this virtual reality matrix world. And I thought they did it excellent. Changing things up, spinning it a little bit here and there. Yeah, there were moments that made me roll my eyes and there were some um, cheese moments because that's what Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is going to be. And excellent actors all over this show. So I'm in it. The fifth season starts. And it's like they do new title screens. Even in the last season, they do it for individual shows. But the theme of the show, you feel it change in the episode when it starts. They've always had a good balance of not putting too much this or that or music and and coming up next or, you know, before. They do it right, I think. They're on a fucking, like, space station. And you don't know what year it is. You find out there's time travel. It gets crazy and you always got to be careful. But it's so much fun. So, like I say in some of my movie reviews and perhaps some of my TV reviews, I don't mind if you do source material and you put spins on it, you do it where I don't agree with it. So the first season has uh, Centipede and Deathlock. I would have liked Deathlock to look more like the comic book and have that particular storyline. But I like what they did with it. It looked good. It fit the show. So I'm okay. I, I think the... Problems in the sixth season were, again, you had to find people, and there was this kind of gap here and there, but they did it well, and maybe it has to do with people having to do other things, leaving the show, you always hear about people getting, uh, having a baby, or spending time, and other obligations, uh, they, you know, you sign a five, whatever contract, and you, things like that. You don't notice it in the show. But you do care about the character, so you are wondering um, what's going on, and you miss them in that way. Not as disorienting and confusing as Game of Thrones, in my opinion. But the sixth season, you start to wonder, you know, what's going on? Where is this person? I think the sixth and seventh season are solid, and season seven is just bonkers in, in a really fun way. The season six ends with a serious moment and you're wondering because they have a great way of putting plot um, plot lines that culminate in big events but tying them into an anticlimactic way where you present the next thing. And you, you're just looking at um, a great spin on time travel, on affecting the past and the future. Again, up to season seven, they push the limits. They've got, uh, you know, like mechanical beings, and you find out where people have been missing, and they try to tie everything together, and I think they do an exceptional job. There are a little bit more issues with me rolling my eyes here and there, but I, uh, like I said, do it right, and I don't mind. Do something good, and I don't mind the little changes, the things I disagree with. As long as it's a solid show, it's good, it's fun, I'm going to at least uh, enjoy myself. But if I were to look back and think with a you know, critical, objective uh, mindset, I would say this, it's one of the best superhero shows. It's not perfect. And even the ups and downs, they make the show stand out. Like, in my opinion, with a show like Buffy or Angel, they have a way of uh, recharting the course or being perceptive to things that are happening on the show that maybe they look good on paper and you do a couple of the shows, but, you know, you see feedback. That's a great sign of a good show. You have... You know, people at least listening, paying attention. And this show is going to go down, in my opinion, is one of the best. Maybe it's uh, a... Okay, it is a bias, sure. I love Josh Whedon's work. If that... um, 
if that's an indication, sure. I'm a big fan of Buffy, Angel, two amazing shows in my opinion. You got to give credit to some of the other actors. Um, Ming-Na Wen as Melinda May. She was incredible. Always. And oh, by the way, such great fighting and special effects and power displays. They really did a good job of uh, bridging it. And she's one of the normal humans on it, just an excellent, uh, the cavalry. You had uh, Brent Dalton as Grant, Chloe Bennett as Sky, who, Daisy Johnson and Quake, one of the fan favorites. There are so many characters. And when you meet the Elizabeth Henstridge or Jenna Simmons and uh, Fitz character, everything is in place. The actors are great. The chemistry is awesome. You have characters you lose along the way. Now, it's not as a dark, um, dreary thing where it starts to weigh down on you. Not like that, but it is a superhero show where the stakes get big and things happen. Um, there was an actor from uh, Heroes, because I always say Heroes had the best first two seasons or first season of a superhero show ever. So the casting is great. They fit well. Everything works off each other and really builds. You feel you get to know these people and you're attached and it's a it's a sign of a good show. I might consider it great, but I can see my bias. So seven seasons and the last two seasons are thirteen each. I thought they were 12 for some reason. Now, there is a comic book tie-in, and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. did a lot to... Well, it's actually, it's funny that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is really a spin-off from a movie. And I, I want to give credit to... I, he fucking... You know, the corporate nonsense bullshit, but I'm trying not to blame... Or Marvel, because if my logic serves, like Disney's the parent company, right? And they run everything, but they're ruining Star Wars. Well, they're not ruining the Marvel Cinematic Universe well, yet. The TV universe is. Um, so I'm going to give Marvel Studios the credit. And just the sheer mass of everything. People talk about the. 18 movies or whatever movies, 18 years of movies that culminates in uh, Avengers Endgame. And all that is really um, made larger by the TV universe. I have my other podcasts. You can listen to them. I did the Daredevil, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Defenders, Jessica Jones. And they have, some of those shows have problems where I step back and go, okay, I'm just a fanboy. I love seeing Iron Fist, but I'm going to agree with, you know, someone who was trying to be objective and, you know, say, oh, look, th this plot's all over the place or whatever. Yeah, okay, I have fun, but I'm not going to lie and, you know, try to let that bias overwhelm my senses and my reason. But when I look at it, and it might be a personal thing, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Daredevil, Punisher, The Defenders, which I really liked, is part of this. Now, during the show, there were moments where me and my friend were like, you know, we know they gave up. And I think we correlated it with uh, arguments between the TV division and the movie division. And they all of a sudden fucking hate each other and they don't want to, you know, work with each other. And that's where it all stopped. Like there was not even guest stars anymore. But there was still always hints, so, you know, it's always connected in at least some of the verbal um, conversations people have in some of these shows. And Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. didn't connect with the Netflix shows. I wish they would have. I wish they would have been in the uh, Avengers movies that were big, so you could have put Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Netflix universe in cutscenes when people are turned into dust. And uh, that's Infinity War. And then end game, you could have showed some thing. Now, it just sucks, I guess, because of how contracts work. Maybe you know, maybe it's too much to wish for. But I, I, I wish they would do it. 
I wish they would have done it. Too late now. It doesn't mean Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is not a great show. I think it's a great show. Probably the best superhero show. Now it has seven seasons under its belt. All really good. Some great. Key episodes. Real great music. The theme connecting to the movies is done well. The plots are really good. The expectations when they're subverted are really done well. Like some things you don't expect. And you see Samuel Jackson, like Nick Fury's on the show uh, twice, I think. And that's a really big connection. And I'll give it that. But it never really showed that promise. So that would be a nitpick for me and the overall theme. But it shows that Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. held its own. It became its own thing. I regret that they never had that resolution with Coulson and the Avengers movies, but it doesn't tarnish the show. Uh, actors were great in it. Side characters, Kyle MacLachlan was on the show. Just, just side characters. And the way they played with the plots and bringing things back and making things old new again, making new things old, it's... It's a, a daring thing. It's, I think, something more shows should do. Uh, try things, and, but course correct. Keep aware of it. And I think the show is amazing for that reason. So if you haven't watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I recommend you go watch it. It's a really good show, as uh, objectively I think it is. And as a fanboy, it's one of my favorites now. And congratulations to everybody on the show, especially. Clark Gregg as Coulson. Man, he did it for seven years and never let down. He was always on the top of his game. No matter, you know, you always hear things about the behind the scenes. So, congratulations. The show is amazing. Everybody go watch it. I'll see everybody next time. Take care.